Good morning, everyone. Welcome on this sort of snowy day, huh? Not really, not yet, anyways, and maybe not at all. Well, that wouldn't be so bad. We're, we're hoping for spring, and so we're here uh, too in this season of Lent, and we're looking forward to the to the morning, the dawn, right? The that day of the resurrection. But for now. Uh, taking time to look at things that are that are central to our faith and our walk and our life with Jesus Christ, and so that's our theme for this for this next uh, few few weeks here. Finding center today, we're focusing on the role of purpose and and what a joy and a gift that is for us to have that center and how we can we can uh, how the Lord is how we follow in the Lord's steps for all that. So uh, let's uh, let's get to it here. We're here. Welcome and. Uh, Let's begin in song now. If you will please stand, we will sing. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we turn our eyes to, to the Holy Week ahead of us, we find scribes asking Jesus these questions. They want to know. Jesus' answer is twofold. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and love, love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. These two commands are grounded in love. Lord, grant that we love God and love others as Christ loves us. And grant that we turn away from hate and indifference and share the love of Christ. We'll sing a song of praise. Running out. 
Let us pray. Oh God, you sent your Son into the flesh that he might pay for our sins and open eternal life to us. Grant us strong faith so that we may purposely take up our crosses and follow where he has led the way through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The New Testament reading today is Romans 5, 1 through 11. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our surroundings, our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. But while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for our ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, which much more shall much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist. And others say, Elijah. And others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, You are the Christ. And he said, strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And he called to him the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and we invite Christy forward for the children's message.
Good morning. All right, so there are some kids here, and I know there are some watching at home, but we are going to play a game, and even if you're not a kid, I want you to participate. So um, today, the game that we're going to play is called Who Am I? So I am going to give four clues, and I want, and it's going to reveal a Bible character. And if you think you know the answer, you don't have to raise your hand, shout it out. And each clue gets like more and more refined, so you should know by the end. So think back to your Sunday school days. So here we go, a Bible character. First one, I'm an Old Testament character. That could be anyone. I like animals. I had to build a huge boat all by myself. Do we know who it is? Yeah, Noah. All right, good. My children, wife, and I were the only people to be alive in the big flood. Okay, that's Noah. Good job. A plus. Here's the second one. I was a tax collector. I cheated people out of their money. Ooh, good guess. I was very, very small. I might be found up a tree. Zacchaeus. Yeah, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Okay, two more. I was the king, was a king of Israel. I could play the harp and was a shepherd. Yeah. King Solomon was my son and I killed Goliath the giant. It's David. One more before the final round. Um, I was born in Egypt and I was a little bit of a basket case. <laughs> yes, Moses. I heard God through a burning bush. I led the people across the Red Sea and brought the Ten Commandments. It is Moses. All right, final round. I helped the blind to see. John the Baptist is his cousin. He was born of a virgin and the Savior of the world. It is Jesus. Yes, the number one Sunday school answer, right? So if you were listening when the gospel reading was read today, um, there was the gospel lesson involved a little bit of identification. So Jesus asked his disciples, now he wasn't actually playing a game, but he did ask them um, who he thought that he was, who they thought he was. Because not everybody recognized Jesus, and um, some people were confused about interpreting prophecies and trying to understand who he was. So Jesus asked his disciples, who do you think that I am? And he got a variety of answers. So the disciples, they said, some people claimed he was maybe like a prophet or a, a, a prophet figure. But then Peter piped up, and good old Peter, he said, Jesus, you are the Messiah, the Son of God, because Peter recognized who he was. And this was important for the ministry of Jesus and his followers, even though Jesus actually told them not to tell many people about him. But it was important that they recognized who Jesus was. So that brings us to today. What about us? Do we recognize who Jesus really is? Do we really understand and do we proclaim and live our life um, not just talking in Sunday school, the Sunday school answer, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. But do we know that he was the Savior, the promised one who saved us from our sins and fulfilled God's promises? Well, we know that Jesus is the Savior of the world and the Son of God. But you know what? There's a lot of people that don't know that. And it's not something that we should keep to ourselves. It's something that we should share. And we know even more than Peter did because now we have the whole Bible to tell us the timeline and we've come thus far. And so we know even more that Jesus was and is the Messiah and that he died and came back to life for us. And we can't keep that amazing news to ourselves. So our job is to share when people ask, who is this Jesus? Who do you think, who do you say that Jesus is? That we have the ability and the duty to share it as Christians because we, we wear that, that name, that title, and that livelihood that we walk and follow him. And so while we know who our Savior is, there are many that don't, and we are called to share that good news with others. And when in doubt... The Sunday school answer, it's all about Jesus. It really is. Let's pray. Lord God, help us to share that you are the true and, and right Savior of the world that was long awaited. 
Lord, help us not to keep it to ourselves and when asked to be bold, to share and proclaim and tell with others. Lord, we love you and we are thankful that your son Jesus is who he says he is and we know this. Lord, we pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. We will continue with the singing of the next song and you can remain seated. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, you have done all that we need to follow and to live and to, to have peace on, on account of, of what you've done. And we ask you, Lord, that that, that would so shape and move us that, that we would know our, the purpose you've given us without a doubt and that you would bless us with an understanding of your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
when you have a purpose in life, you, you do things on purpose. On purpose, you do things. If you have a goal or a reason or an aim in life, then you're going to do things intentionally and, and you're going to move to, to reach that goal or a purpose. So what do people say might be a, a good goal in their life? Well, one goal might be to make money so that, that when they want to do or go where they want to go or, when they, or, or they'd be able to buy what they want to buy. They want enough financial resources, say, for, for a good house and for, for a comfortable retirement and so that they can take care of their needs, or, to have a car to drive, have transportation, right? So they get a job, they do their work, they, they do things intentionally in order to accomplish the purpose of making money. Some people might say that they want, want power to be able to control their lives so they take charge uh, of who, who they are and, and what they do and, and they, so that they get to do and, and say what they want to do and say. They want to say something and have other people do things for them maybe. They want to be of an influence, and most of the time they want to be a good influence, right? Some people simply want to have that control. They want those take charge opportunities in life. So they, they'll do things to make that happen. Other people, they want to be popular. They want to, they want to be liked. They want to, to, to be part of the group. They want to be, in, they want to be included. They want a certain prestige and to be, to be looked up to, right? So they, they'll do things intentionally and on purpose to reach that goal. When you have a purpose in life, you do things on purpose to reach it, you see? So dare I ask, what is your purpose in life? But before we answer that, before you answer that, we need to look at what happened in, to Jesus in this Bible passage for today. He's on this road to Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And he gets, his, he gets the answers. John the Baptist, come back from the dead. One of the prophets, Elijah. Then probably because he picked up on their discussion enough to know he might need to pump their brakes a little bit, he turns the query on those who are with him. Who do you say that I am? Peter, speaking for the disciples, kind of, he's kind of their spokesman. He's the first one to be called after all, right? So Peter, he's, he, he pipes up, he steps up and he says, you are the Christ. Great answer, right? Outstanding fantastic answer but what does it mean maybe it appears that Peter has maybe not the same ideas that or the, the ideas that he was meant that, that God meant for him to have right he, he's got the idea he, he, he's got the idea that that He's come and he's, he's sent, especially for, for a purpose. He's got that, right? But he, 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 is he thinking this is going to be somebody, for instance, with power to make dreams come true? He's hoping that Christ will overthrow the, the Roman government so that they can be free, so that there'll be no more oppression. He believes that the Christ will show incredible political and military power. He's seen, he's seen so much in the last weeks and months with Jesus, right? He's seen, he's seen great glimpses of power over demons and healing of every, of, of every disease and disability under the sun. He's, he's raised people. He's cured his mother-in-law, his own mother-in-law, who was sick and down in bed and was headed in the wrong direction. He cured her. He put self-righteous teachers in their places. He knows what he's about. He knows where he's going. He knows how to get stuff done. And so Peter's thing that asked for 
money and possessions, this Christ will give him the, the country where every, everybody will be safe, where, where they all can have whatever they want and they will be able to do whatever they want. It will be a wonderful place to live with no worries. And what's more, the disciples will get prime spots, prestige, and people looking up to them. And they'll be welcomed and well-liked and they ha- haven't even... They, all. This is what Peter's thinking, and they haven't even gotten to the glowy, transfigured Jesus part yet. But that make your dreams come true type isn't the type of Christ that Jesus had to be. He had to correct this false understanding of what Christ would do and, and the purpose that he has. So he says, the Son of Man must... The Son of Man must. Dot, 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 dot. The word must in Greek is three letters long. It equates to, to a D or delta and, a, and an E or epsilon and, and an I, a yoda, right? Dei is the way we pronounce it in Greek. It means it is necessary, which all sounds very impersonal, but it's very much to the point, isn't it? It is necessary. It has to happen. It must occur. There's no two ways about it kind of necessary. The Son of Man must be rejected. He must suffer. He must be killed. So Jesus has this purpose in life. Wow. Now the question is, why does he have to do this? First, because the Old Testament has always said that this is what's going to happen. So we go for this. We go back to Isaiah 53. I mean, this is what this is what Mark is pulling on right here. He's remembering Isaiah 53, and that's that's the Old Testament prophecy that simply describes the Christ as one who is despised and rejected. He was esteemed not, it says, right? He was stricken, smitten, and afflicted. He bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows with his stripes. We are healed. He was oppressed and afflicted, and the, and the Lord laid our iniquity, our sin, our transgression and horrible rebellion. It laid it all on him. The Old Testament spoke it, and so it must happen to Jesus for him to be the Christ. A second reason why this must happen is because God has given him a certain mission. He has to live up to his name. His name is Jesus. He's the one who saves. God has given him this purpose, this mission, and this task to Jesus to live up to his name. He is to save his people to forgive them, to reconcile them with God. And and we heard what Paul wrote in, in Romans, that God demonstrates his love for us in this plain act of Christ in dying for us. And, and that's that he died for us even though we were still sinners. He had no reason from us to do that. It was all him. And that's what he did. That was his purpose. And the result is is that we are all reconciled to God. All of us. Why must Jesus be rejected? Why must he be killed? Why must he suffer? Because he has this purpose in life. That's it. He has to reconcile us to God. To forgive us. To give us the salvation we can't get for ourselves and that only he can give. Now, don't think that these, any of these things that happened to him happened because the Romans were in control. They sure seemed to have political power and they were, they were in charge of the crucifixion, but they weren't the ones in control. As the Jewish leaders, those scribes and Pharisees and chief priests, they weren't the ones in control either even though they ran that trial, even though it was a total rig, rigged jury. 
Even Peter, when he tries to stop Jesus by saying, this will never happen to you. He, he wasn't in control. Not by a long shot. Jesus is the one with the power. Jesus is the one doing everything on purpose. Just before this incident, Jesus healed a blind man and made a deaf man heal. Here, Jesus <clears throat> had fed thousands of people with fish and bread, and, and he's cast out a demon from a young girl. And, and that young girl and her mother didn't even belong among the people of Israel. He just did it. And they had faith. And just, and just as mentioned right after this scene, you know, Jesus is going to be, he's going to go up a mountain and be transfigured with all his power on glory, and glory and display. He's going to be decked out, dazzling white, lit up in light for Peter, for James, and for John so they would see exactly who he was and, and not doubt and, and truly understand. They would see Jesus. Later when, later when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night when he was betrayed, the, the mob comes to arrest him, right? You remember what happened? Peter, he impulsively whips out his sword and he cuts off the ear of the high priest's servant. And Jesus says, Stop! Stop! Don't you realize I can call down a dozen legions of angels to protect me? Jesus allows himself to be arrested. Then he, when he stood before Pilate, the Roman governor, he could have said something and gone free. He has that power, you see? He could have said anything and gone free. But he stays silent. He's going to be crucified on purpose. When he's, when he's with the Sanhedrin, those religious leaders, they ask him a question. Are you the Christ, the Son of God? And Jesus finally speaks, plain as day, I am. I am is the name of God himself in the Old Testament. So when, when Jesus claims that name, no matter how true it is, he's forced their hand against him. He's guilty of blasphemy in their, in their eyes, in their way of understanding, in their blindness he's forced their hand he's spoken a death sentence on himself he's claimed an authority and a power for himself that that, that is not in their mind that is not his so ironic so they have to can they have to condemn him to death yet jesus could have stopped he could have stopped his arrest. He could, have, he, he could have stopped his suffering. He could have stopped his trial or his execution at any time that he wanted to. Just, bam, it would have been done. He was the one who was in control, and yet he had a purpose. Everything he do, did was on purpose. He did this all for you. He did this for me to, 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 to forgive us, to save us, to make us all brothers and sisters in Christ. So what do you do? You've he you hear this, right? You've heard Jesus' purpose and, and what he did on purpose. Shouldn't we go back and look at that question then that he, that he just asked, that we just asked ourselves? What is your purpose in life? Of course, you can have more than one. That's, that's fine. We can have more than one purpose. I'm not going to boil it down to just one. But we do have a clear purpose given at the end of the Bible passage for this sermon. We're to take up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow Jesus. We're to take up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow Jesus. So what, what does that look like? What, what does denying ourselves and taking up our crosses and following Jesus really look like? Here's a few examples for you. 
The first one has to do with advertisements, actually public service announcements, right? Something that any of us would see at any old spot on the, on the, on the media that we, that we consume. And, and this one, though, is actually from, a, from years ago. It's from the Ad Council who put them out. And, and, and in, in it, one man, he, he, he climbs up some stairs on some crutches, and then a voice uh, uh, tells the viewer that the man would have learned to walk if only someone had given the money to build a rehab center in his area that he could actually get to, right? A similar commercial showed a woman alone in a room. A voice told that, the viewer then that this woman almost received a meal and a visit from someone, but she didn't. The point of these ads is like, like these, that's, that's to help people realize that, the, that there's good that they can do and, and, and good that would not happen if they, they didn't give of some resources that they have, time, money, whatever. So what do we do when... If we're the ones in that position to give and we, and we deny ourselves and follow Jesus, we, we give, right? We give. We give of that money that we may have worked so hard to get so that we could buy what we wanted for ourselves. We, we give of our time, even though, even though we will get any little, not no fame for doing so. We do this on purpose. You know, and then too, there's there's research in another way. There's there's research, um, and this is going to sound kind of funny though. Some folks were doing some research, and they were studying obituaries of all things, right? They were studying obituaries, and over the course of of the months that they were reading all these obituaries and collecting information, they were looking they were looking for specific wording in these in these. Well, I guess you'd call them summaries of people's lives, right? And so they were, they were looking for specific words, and they, they wanted the kinds of words that described people's lives. You know what the number one word was? Help. The number one word was help. People weren't remembered for their position or their popularity or power or how much money they had. They were remembered because they helped others. They helped veterans or or the disabled or some other organization that they had a heart for. They followed Jesus. And to follow Jesus is to remember someone has, to remember Jesus is someone who has intentionally helped who took up the task of loving a neighbor. That's, that's someone who follows Jesus, someone who, someone who, who intentionally helps others, who, who, who doesn't do the thing that might best serve themselves, but serves another. It, it, they take up the task of loving a neighbor just, just like Jesus loved us. Some of our friends of ours, some friends of ours lost their son at an early age. He died suddenly at the age of 33. It was a pulmonary embolism, so it was just bang like that, right? They found out that that he, only later they found out, you know, going through his things, that that he was an organ and tissue donor. And, And so he had checked this box on his driver's license, and when you do that, when you get a driver's license, or if you have already have one, you have an opportunity to do that, to be a donor that and, and literally give of yourself, right? <laughs> give of yourself to, to, when you die. And, and you just can't imagine as parents who are just looking for, for that connection that they've lost with this, this child of theirs. A child gone before his time, right? They, 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 they were so proud to see the number of people that, that, that this, the tissue from his body kind of helped and, and helped sustain help them in sustaining their lives or improving their situation that was just meaningful so meaningful to them he had intentionally checked that donor box on his driver's license and it was helping but you and I don't have to die to be able to give of ourselves 
we, I gave blood a lot when I was younger, but I got out of the habit because I was in and out of the country so much uh, years back. But there are people who have given gallons in blood, right? Maybe even some of them are right here in this room. Actually, I know some of them are right here in this room. And I'm, and I'm sure that there are those who have given every time they've get, had a chance or, or found a way to kind of just ru- run on over to the, to the center, right? But once again, do you see? Do you see what's happening? They're not giving for the cookies and juice and the cheerful conversation, even as nice as that is. I can remember seeing donor pins, right? Donor pins on my uncle's dresser. I, I've heard of people getting... Uh, you know, like tacky blood drive socks and, and, and T-shirts. But that's, that's not why, they're, they're, that's not why they, these folks are giving blood either. They're, that's, that's nice and appreciated. It, it's nice to be appreciated, though. Instead, they're giving blood. It, this shows something that we can do on purpose because Jesus has called us to do this. To, to, to do something like this, to follow him and to literally give of ourselves, our, <laughs> even give of our bodily resources for someone else, to deny what we may want and need and instead give away what someone else needs. Right? Just yesterday I saw a TikTok video. Yes, I know what TikTok is. Okay? But I saw the TikTok on Instagram, so yeah, I'm not that hip. It, Instagram is old news, right? But uh, it just, what I saw just melted my heart because there was this Latina mom, right? This Latina mom with a young girl, and, and, what, and what I saw looked so strange. It looked like an oversized robot frame, but hanging in the middle of this barless cage, I guess, Not, kind of suspended, upright, standing nice and tall and straight, was a, was a, was a young girl, a, a, a teenage youth, right, or a preteen maybe even. And, and, in this, and, and in this, on the bottom of the cage were attached wheels, right, and, and attached to the girl's shoes. Her shoes were attached to, to the deck of a, a skateboard. And so what this mom was doing It still gets me. What this mom was doing was pushing this girl up in a skate park, up the, up the ramp and down the other side and up and down and all around. And they were spinning and whirling and laughing and, and living and giving. It was such a picture of joy. It, was, it looked so awkward. It looked so strange. It looked so funny. The mom, the mom was laughing and puffing and couldn't get her breath. And that kid was beaming, doing something she'd never have a chance to do otherwise. And this is, this is what this giving is all about. It's a chance at life. It's a chance at something something else, something greater. They went all over that park, and she was making sure that this young person didn't get left out and had fun and, and enjoyed sport and had some truly exciting experiences. It was, it was oddly moving to see because it looked weird. And yet, the, it was the perfect example of... of, of what like our our that's the perfect example of the kind of inspiration our media should be, and and how and how people really do and can give for others. Anyway, you you see how this works, right? You do something on purpose because because you have a purpose in life, and as Christians, our purpose is to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow Jesus. Why? Because Jesus had a purpose. Plain and simple. On purpose, he suffered. He took that on himself. And it was necessary for him, it was necessary for him to die. He had to be killed and to rise again. He did this all on purpose for you, for me, for the whole world. He did it to give us life and he did it, he did it 
he did it to give us a clear, central purpose for our lives that we live each day. Amen. Please stand. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our offering is an act of worship that that recognizes God's goodness and and allows us to to respond in thanksgiving. And so um, in order to keep contact down, we've placed plates at the entrance to the sanctuary and you're able to just approach those at any time and and leave your gifts in honor to the, to the Lord and help, help us as hope to advance God's mission, to be that outpost for him in, in this area and to, and to do things that, that, that maybe not a lot of people would do, but we can. And so I encourage you to consider your gifts and to offer them to the Lord and, and, and let it be a blessing. Um, at this point, I'd ask the congregation to sit, but uh, the officers that are being installed today to please remain standing. So I'm not going to have anybody up to the front like I usually do, and or, you know we're trying to keep the movement down. And so if you look, all the rest of you, if you're down, then look around, and you can see who we've got here. We've got a number of people. Some folks are traveling and aren't able to make it this weekend, but they're, they're just the same. They're installed. Um, and you see uh, Chris Nelson standing back there because he is, uh, is, is uh, open to uh, stepping in in Jim Gillard's place, who would have been installed, but is, is, uh, uh, um, who's, who's sold his home and is moving and, and starting up at the next stage of his, his life here. And so Chris is, will be stepping in as, as elder, and, and I pray that you will affirm that uh, choice uh, in the next voters meeting. But we're going we're gonna to advance a blessing to him here, okay, and, and ask that as well. And for all these other folks, they need your help. They need, uh, they need your prayers and, and all the rest. So, beloved in the Lord, right? People, family of hope, Holy Scripture tells us that all things should be done in, decently and in good order. And so, with, because of the Constitution and bylaws that, that in, this, in this congregation that established the, very, uh, the, the different offices that we have, we have men and women who are elected and appointed to serve. And so... In, in doing this, the church is an example of the early, the early Christian church, and that's described in Acts chapter 6, where it says, The twelve summoned the, summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, who, will, who we will appoint to this duty. But... We will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And, and in so doing, uh, God got people involved in his mission and made sure that the gospel and the, and the word would continue to go, on, go forward. And so also the, then, too, we do this, what we do, because the apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, he writes this, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that everything God, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To Him belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. And so you see, we've all been given gifts, and we're meant to all put them in together in this place we call hope and, and be of service to one another so that so that people would see Jesus, right? So here, here we have, this is, we have uh, Greg Collins who's been elected to serve as uh, 
congregational president, Wade Byer as vice president, Jeff Carter again as treasurer, Suzanne Siebert as uh, congregational secretary, uh, India Martz as financial secretary, our elders were, uh, are Akeen Shadeko, Tom Calgaro, Tim Spitzak, and, and Jim Gillard, and now uh, Chris, as I mentioned before. Also trustee is Al Kitt, education is Mandy Wessinger, stewardship chair is David Crable, and worship chair, worship committee chair is Noah Boudreau. And so here, uh, you have been chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility at Hope. You are to work with myself, the pastor, that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services in God's house are held at the proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught among the, uh, according to the Lutheran confessions, as we've agreed in our constitution, and that the sacrifice... Uh, the sacraments of Christ are, are administered according to his, the, his establishment, according to how uh, God has established them. That we, we're also to see that uh, provision is made for the Christian instruction of the young and the old and, and that the erring are admonished and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly administered and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You're to assist in caring for the poor and the sick in cultivating harmony among the members and promoting the general welfare of the congregation and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. That's a lot, I know, but that's what we're here for. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it's especially important that you yourselves show as office bearers in the church by word and example how to be faithful to him in service and in Christian devotion. So, in presence of God and of this congregation, I, I ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. Now, this is for you, um, for the congregation, right? Dear, dear people of hope, You've heard these promises of, faithless, uh, uh, of faithfulness. You've heard these promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women whom you've selected to serve as officers of Hope Lutheran Church. Do you promise to support them in the work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of your abilities that God has given you so that he may be glorified in his work and be done, that his work may be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. We do. So here you go. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I install you as officers of Hope Lutheran Church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God enlighten and strengthen you in, in your offices that, we, that you may be good and faithful stu stewards of his, uh, to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Would the congregation please stand as we pray? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them by your Holy Spirit those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks. And, and, and especially we ask for wisdom and strength and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the, the, the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members that your name may be glorified and that here and in all places under heaven, the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days, we, with all your faithful people, may hear the voice of Christ saying, come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Just like to again uh, acknowledge before the congregation and before our members, all the members that, that 
a number of people, uh, while we brought, have new people serving in, in many spots, there are those who have, who have stepped down, and we want to extend thanks and appreciation to all those. Jim Gillard, of course, is going off the Board of Elders. Corey Waller was on for years. Uh, Julie Wycor was uh, Congregational Secretary. Jane Collins served on the, uh, the Board of Stewardship. And John Ahrens as Congregational Presidents. We thank you, all of us, we thank you for your service and leadership. So receive the blessing of the Lord. Go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty, the most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Let's pray. O oh Lord, in these Lenten days, our minds are set on, on your th- set our minds on your things rather than the things of man, that we may deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow your Son through, through this life and into the joys of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, you have given your church the joy of proclaiming the truth that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us so that we might be justified by his blood and saved from your wrath over sins. Grant all pastors and, and teachers the gift of your spirit to preach and teach this bo- truth boldly and faithfully and help all, to conf- all your people to confess it in word and deed in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, keep us from being ashamed of the Son of Man when we face persecution for his name and in this world, that he may not be ashamed of us when he comes in your glory with the angels. Be near to all those who are facing martyrdom for Christ and and sustain them to the end, that their faith might not falter, that they would have a good confession and that they may be crowned with life before you, Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, since all kingship belongs to you and your rule over all the nations, we pray that you would bless President Biden, Governor Walz, and and Mayor Fassbender, and that all those who govern us in, in your stead, that we may be ruled wisely and in accord with your will. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, through your Holy Spirit, pour your love into the hearts of, of Avis, who is who is struggling to regain strength and and hospitalized for Mary as she prepares for surgery this week, for for Jim with his eye surgery upcoming this week, and for Jerry also with hers very soon. For Don Smith, that he would have a good report on his test, for Lisa and her fight against cancer, and for all those, for for Don and Sophia and, and so many others who suffer in our midst, that their suffering may produce endurance endurance character and character a hope that will not put them to shame be with Avis and Sharon also and comfort them in their grief over Dennis grant them health healing wholeness in accord with your perfect will and sustain them in all their trials Lord in your mercy O Lord, we remember with thanksgiving the multitude of nations that rejoice in heaven before you and with their father Abraham. We pray that you would sustain us in the same justifying faith that as his offspring we may share in the everlasting covenant you made with him. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, please bless and protect our preschool. With registration filling up so soon, it certainly looks like a good year ahead, and with many returning students, we will continue to have relationship with families. That, and we pray you will use that relationship. You will build and grow that relationship and let, bless us to form friendships and build up faith, not only in the children, but in our families as well. Bless the children to grow and to learn and and our teachers and staff to teach and guide and form these young ones with wisdom and joy. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Sing our closing song. You may be seated. Just a few announcements for everyone. First is that midweek services are ongoing and being posted to our YouTube uh, Hope of Hastings page. And so they will be up by 7 p.m. on Wednesday evenings. And so we're going ahead, too, in, uh, in our theme for the week. Uh, uh, for the for the for the midweek services, of course, we're we're having these these monologues and presenting uh, the the this picture this uh, story of a journey to the cross, right? For, and 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 how God has led has led His people to that moment and that place, and what comes of that. And so we're we're continuing to look at that, and and we're having uh, different individuals from the congregation kind of present those perspectives, and and it's been really fun and interesting so far. I encourage you to take a look. The the first one 
uh, of course, well, we had Ash Wednesday, and, and our first uh, uh, online service has been, was posted this went last, past Wednesday. Confirmation will return again to 6 p.m. online and in person. Uh, we'd like if, if, uh, if the youth can, of course, be here in person. Um, and, and wanted to especially uh, extend the invitation that uh, if, uh, if uh, maybe if the, the camera can get a look at the, the seating arrangement and everything, the, 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 the requirements by the state are, are being alleviated. And so you can see our seating is rearranged, but we're still spacing ourselves because it is recommended, but we're here and we've got space open and we're, and we're doing everything we can to kind of make everybody fit and be comfortable and, and be spaced. Please come and return. We are ready and waiting for you to, to take part in worship, but only when you're ready to. So, but here we are. When, when you're ready, we're, we're here. Wanted you to know. Uh, in just a moment or two, we will start our study with counsel on, on, uh, on the book uh, Built on the Rock by Ted Culver. We're, w- that study will take about an hour's time, and, and it's open not only to counsel, but to any interested individuals. Um, at, you can probably see a table out in the lobby there full of baskets with items in it. Those, were, those, were, those are items that, we, that the preschool is a, accepting a donation for. If you are, are willing to donate something to the, to, the congrega- uh, to the preschool, you are welcome to remove a basket and bring it home with you and share it with whoever you like. That, the, that those baskets were donations that were meant to be part of a fundraiser. And because of COVID, this is our solution to doing that. Please take a look at the baskets. Um, and, and of course, we have ba- birthdays to celebrate. And what did you know? Somebody around here has a birthday coming up this week. Right, Christy? Yes. Yep, okay. Of course, she's used to getting, uh, getting attention. So that, that's not so bad, right? Christy's birthday's coming up. And, and so Tracy Fearon is celebrating a birthday very soon. Julie Pfeiffer, Charlotte Peace and, uh, Pierce is celebrating a birthday, and Akeen Shadeko. So since uh, Christy has often sung us birth, happy birthday, we're going to sing for her. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Christy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Christy. Yeah. What a year, huh? Good year. First of the day for today is, read it with me, please. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Go in peace, serve the Lord. We'll be right back here for the study in just a moment. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.